In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, on this great feast of the Epiphany of our Lord, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Come to the front.
let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy prophets, apostles, and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. 
Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So then, just how many wise men were there? Because the truth is, the gospel really does not specify. Would it surprise you to know that many in the Greek and Russian tradition and others, such as the Syriacs, have for centuries held to the venerable tradition that there were 12 wise men? Since Jesus fulfilled the prophecy to renew Israel, and since there were 12 tribes of Israel, and then of course 12 apostles to succeed them, many of our Eastern brothers and sisters reason that there must also then have been 12 wise men. In any case, our Western tradition holds that there were three, whom we have named Gaspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. Those names are not in the scriptures. One wise man, we reason, for each of the three different gifts mentioned in Matthew's Gospel. Well, regardless of just how many there actually were, the arrival of wise men from the East at the court of Herod the Great, with all their questions about the birth of a new young king of the Jews, this would have caused considerable distress for King Herod, because although he was considered to be of questionable Jewish origin by his own people, still Herod was very well aware of all of the Hebrew prophecies about the coming of a Messiah King. And of course, any such messianic pretender would have been considered a clear threat to Herod's own personal power. Now, Herod was very accustomed to dealing with his political rivals. He had already killed two of his wives, three of his own sons. He was a tyrant, plain and simple, which we see clearly when we witness the ruthless slaughter of those innocent children that Herod undertakes once the wise men evade him on the trip home. Now we know that Matthew, more than any of the other three evangelists, was aware of these long-held hopes and prayers of ancient Israel for the coming of a Messiah. They needed a wise and a powerful new king in order to rid themselves of their bondage, the bondage that they were suffering under the ruthless King Herod and under the tyrannical authority of pagan Rome. St. Matthew is, therefore, 
constantly on the alert for any opportunity to demonstrate that Jesus has fulfilled these expectations. So, in this story of the wise men, Matthew wants us to recognize in Jesus not only a new king, but a kind of a new King Solomon, whose reputation for wisdom was legendary. Remember that Solomon had also received a great visitor from the east, the Queen of Sheba, who was said to have been breathless as she marveled at Solomon's wisdom, at his wealth, at his enormous power. Our story of the Epiphany is, therefore, a celebration of this wisdom represented in the child Jesus, present both in his person and in his message. And it, it is an unpretentious wisdom because it comes first in this little child. But it is, in fact, my friends, the only wisdom that ultimately survives. Please consider this. The wise men in today's gospel represent a very secular kind of wisdom, a practical wisdom, something they obtained through the clever use of the very best knowledge that was available to them at the time. They were, in a way, the scientists of their day, probably astrologers from Persia who studied the stars and gained power, wealth, and status by sharing this knowledge with others. They were respected, they were revered by many cultures. You see, these wise men, with their human wisdom, with their great wealth and power, they were considered to be the most successful individuals of their time. Interestingly, it is this same kind of practical wisdom based on attainable human knowledge that remains the centerpiece of today's secular society. Because today, it is still human knowledge that leads to wealth, authority, and power. And human knowledge, as important and as useful as it is, does not constitute wisdom for us as Christians and Catholics. Because Jesus offers us a radically different kind of wisdom. Jesus offers us a wisdom that declares that all forms of human knowledge and all of the power that derives from that must, must be used first in the service of love, not in the pursuit of power, not in the pursuit of wealth or of self-interest. The gospel of Jesus Christ proclaims that true success must be measured in terms of who has been liberated, who has been freed from the bondage to superstition, to poverty, to fear, from the bondage to guilt or low self-esteem. You see, for us, the followers of Jesus the Messiah, Wisdom lies in our freedom from being bound by the values of this world. Which is why Jesus tells us that we must risk using our freedom as he himself did, for loving, for building up, for trusting, and for forgiving. You know, I have sometimes wondered whether the first, perhaps the only question that will be asked of us at the final judgment will be this one. Did you help to set my people free? 
And so I think we need to ask ourselves, do our actions, do our attitudes help to make other people free? And do we strengthen their belief in God as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit? And do we then help them to use that same faith to become stronger, happier, more confident? These wise men recognized in the coming of the Christ child a divine wisdom, a divine wisdom that eclipses all other forms of human knowledge. And when they found it, they knelt down in worship and in adoration. And they offered the very best that they had, knowing that it paled by comparison to, get to the gift being offered to the world in that small child. Well, the good news is that Jesus offers us the very same gift. Jesus offers us an opportunity to share in his own divine wisdom and then to share in the freedom that comes from that. The question for us is simply this. Are we wise enough to accept it? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this feast of the Epiphany of our Lord, let us bring our prayers to the throne of Almighty God. The response is, Lord, gracious, Christ graciously hear us. Christ graciously hear us. We pray that the Holy Father, the bishops, and all who minister in the church may reveal the love of God by lives of faithful service and by heartfelt devotion to the Lord who has revealed himself to us. Christ hear us. Christ graciously hear us. 
We pray that all civil leaders may have the humility to listen to the voice of God, which alone speaks the eternal law by which people may have life everlasting. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray that the Lord will bless our world with peace during the coming year, especially in the Holy Land, Ukraine, and any parts of the world that are currently torn apart by warfare and oppression. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray that all those who are oppressed, homeless, impoverished, in danger because of warfare or persecution or suffering from natural disasters may be comforted by the love of the Lord who knew these hardships in his own life. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray that Almighty God will bless all parents, teachers, and any others who are entrusted with the care and education of our children. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray that the members of our parish family who are sick or suffering, especially the chronically ill, may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. We pray that all those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially our deceased parishioners and benefactors, may enjoy the joys of eternal life in God's presence. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. On this feast of the Epiphany, let us seek the intercession of the Blessed Mother of God as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these gifts of your church in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrifice and received Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Douglas our Bishop, Wayne his auxiliary, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant. and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son eternal with you in your glory, appeared in a human body, truly sharing our flesh, 
and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, <coughs> Loris, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, 
so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you in you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever.
Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is number 460, the first Noel, 460.
let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning. First one, not so much an announcement as a thank you. A big thank you to uh, the many of you who dropped off uh, cards and gifts and goodies and things like that for uh, Bishop Bistricki, Father Bill, Deacon Quinto, and me. Uh, if I haven't thanked you personally, my apologies. There are some of you that I really don't even know who goes with what. You see, my best friend's grandson was with us for Christmas. He's old enough to have discovered the fun of unwrapping presents, but not old enough to get that they're not all for him. So they are being enjoyed. Thank you very much. If you haven't yet picked up your 2024 offering envelopes, please do so after Mass. They're at the back of the church. Next Saturday, there will be a full-day presentation on devotion to the Divine Mercy here at the Basilica. The day will begin with Mass at 9 o'clock in the morning and then proceed down to the Parish Hall for the presentation. Uh, the day will wrap up by 3 o'clock. If you're interested in coming, please bring your own lunch and please bring a friend. Next Sunday, there will be our first food and friendship weekend of the, uh, the new year. So please do plan on going downstairs, enjoy some refreshments, and uh, perhaps meet a new parishioner or two. The gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Celi Shrine burn in loving memory of Richard Wojcicki and for the intentions of the Wojcicki family. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.